Hey folks, uh, today we're going to talk about electric power. All right, so um, we're going to start with uh, the definition of power from uh, mechanics. And power, all right, is equal to work over time. That's the algebraic expression. There's, of course, a uh, more physics -y expression, but this will work. Okay, no pun intended. <laughs> Uh, work, in this case, is going to be a change in potential energy. Okay, now, for instance, if something's falling, uh, like a pencil is falling, the, the work done is the work done by gravity, and that's negative the change in potential energy. Now, here, I'm just worried about the magnitude, not the sign. All right, so for charge, change in potential energy is Q delta V. That's from our, our previous units, and we still have time here. Ah, but what's Q divided by time? Well, that's current. Okay, and I'm going to kind of eliminate the delta there. It's, it's, it's implied. Whenever you have a voltage, it's, it, in this case, it's implied it's a delta V. So electric power is equal to current times voltage. Okay, so that's one version of it. Power is measured in watts. So like a 100-watt light bulb or something like that. Current needs to be measured in amps to use this equation. And... Potential is measured in volts, okay? So a watt is equivalent to an amp times a volt. Now, um, there are other versions of this, because if we use en blah, you can use V equals IR, you can do some substituting. So like, for instance, if I get rid of the V in the power equation, you would get I squared times R. If I were to eliminate the I in the equation, which is V over R, you get V squared over R. So you can use any one of those three versions of the power equation to calculate the power of something. Um, it just depends on what they give you. So uh, for a, a simple example to start with, let's say you have a 12 volt car battery. So that's the symbol for that, 12 volts. And let's say you hook it up to a resistor, let's say a light bulb that is six ohms. Okay. So um, things that we can calculate. All right, so what, what power is being dissipated by the battery? Um, let's start with that. So uh, in order to do that, uh, in this case, I've got the V and the R, so I could use the V squared over R. But just for kicks, let's go ahead and calculate I. There's going to be current flowing. So we know that current is voltage over resistance. That's Ohm's law, which in this case is simply 2 amps. It's 12 over 6. All right, so now we know the current flowing through the light bulb. It's 2 amps. Now, as far as power goes, um, eh, we can use any one of these versions. Now we have everything in there. I'll use I times V. So power is I times V, which is 2 times 12. So it's 24 watts. Okay, so it'd be like a 24 watt light bulb. Okay, now um, let's uh, continue and answer the following questions. If this battery is rated at 20 amp hours okay so it's rated at 20 amp hours that's that's a rating and, and by the way if you look uh let's say on a calculator battery if you pull the batteries out of your calculator and look at them they'll have a rating as well now oftentimes it's milliamp hours but it's the same idea okay and we'll talk about what that is in a sec here um if your battery has that rating in this circuit how much time would it operate before it no longer has any energy to push charge through it, um, how much charge total would flow through the battery, and how much total work would the battery do, all right? So um, what is this rating? Okay, well, you're taking amps times hours. You're taking current times time. Well, what is that? Well, that is charge, all right? You might remember current is charge divided by time, right? So charge is current times time. So this rating is actually telling you how much charge the battery will push through it uh, before the battery runs out of energy. Now, in an offhand way, it's also a measure of energy, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But an amp hour is, is a charge. Okay, now it's, it's not coulombs because a coulomb would be an amp times a second. Uh, so this is coulombs times 3,600. Okay, all right, so uh, how much charge is this? All right. Well, um, the charge is 20 amps. And then the time would be one hour, which would be 3,600 seconds. Okay. So that's current times time in amps times seconds. And you get 720 
1,000 coulombs. So that's how much charge the battery will push um, through it before the battery runs out of energy. It's kind of like you lifting boxes. You can lift so many boxes up until you run out of energy, right? All right. Now, um, the time that the battery will operate for. So there's a couple ways to do that. Um, one way is very simple. Um, we are drawing two amps of current. The battery is rated at 20 amp hours. Okay. So uh, if we do 20 amp hours, well, that equals two amps times how many hours? Well, the time would be 10 hours, which would also be um, 36,000 seconds. All right, so that's your time that the battery will operate for before it runs out of juice, okay, as we say. And by the way, when we say a battery runs out of juice, it's not running out of charge. This battery's net charge is always zero, okay? What the battery is running out of is energy, okay? Just like if you're lifting boxes up. When, if you run out of energy, you don't run out of boxes. You run out of energy, calories to do the work. Well, the battery is running out of joules to do the work to push these charges through it. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the work done by the battery. So there's a couple ways to do this. Okay. So one is to use power is work divided by time. So work is power times time. The power um, is 24 watts. And the time is 36,000 seconds. And if you multiply those out, oops, I didn't do that ahead of time, so you'll give me one second. I get a big number, 864,000 joules. Okay. Another way to do this, though, would be to take Q times delta V. Okay. The charge was 720,000, okay. and delta V was 12. Oh, did I miss a zero on this? Oh, I don't think I did miss a zero. Wait, hold on one second. 24 times 36,000. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I missed a zero on this. Hold on. Well, let me, okay, let me just do this. 720. Or did I add a zero to that? But I shouldn't have. Oh, over here, I added a zero. Two, okay, this should be 72,000 coulombs. I apologize. So that's 72,000 coulombs. So let's take one zero off of this. Pardon my uh, math error here. Uh, so they should be the same number. Okay, so if I do seven, 72,000 times 12, uh, we get the same number, 864,000 joules. So you can use either way to find the work. Most of the time when we're doing circuits, though, we're going to use the first method, uh, just typically. Okay. Now, one last thing I'll mention in this example. Conceptually, what's happening here? Okay, so here's the idea. The battery has stored energy. All right, just like you have calories, the battery has a similar thing. It has stored energy. Okay. When, now, we're going to pretend it's positive charges flowing, even though we know better. So if we're pretending positive charges flow, they're going to flow clockwise through the circuit. Okay. So here's the idea. Remember our analogy from the previous uh, discussion. The battery is like a chairlift on a ski resort. The battery gives the skiers, and the, the positive charges, those flowing charges are the skiers, the battery gives the skiers energy. Okay, it gives them potential energy. Now, if it was a ski slope, it would be gravitational potential energy. In this case, uh, the battery gives the charges electric potential energy. Okay, as the charges flow through the circuit, they go through the, the resistor or the head or the headlight or the windshield wiper or whatever. Okay, uh, they then lose that potential energy. So much like skiers skiing down a slope, if a skier is skiing down a slope. Um, their gravitational potential energy is turning into kinetic energy, but eventually all that kinetic energy turns into heat. You lose it due to friction, and when you stop, you lose all that energy due to heat. The same thing happens here. You lose energy due to heat. Now, if it's a headlight, you're going to lose a little bit of energy as light, but even that light, when it hits something, will turn to heat anyway. Um, same thing with like a windshield wiper. Um, sure, uh, the energy is turning into kinetic, a little bit of kinetic energy in the windshield wipers, but as they wipe the windshield off, um, they, even that energy turns into heat. Um, for like a radio, let's say it's a radio plugged in. Uh, well, okay, you get a, mostly heat. You get a little bit of sound energy, okay? But even that sound energy, as it travels through the air and hits stuff, it turns into heat as well. So in essence, all the electrical potential energy that the charges gained when they went through the battery, they lose as heat. Power is the rate at which that electrical potential energy is turning into heat. 
Don't forget, power is work divided by time. So that 24 watts means that every second, the you're generating 24 joules of heat in that resistor or that headlight or that windshield wiper. Okay. All right. So um, that's a, a brief explanation of electric power. Um, I hope you found that uh, explanation helpful, and thank you very much.